Assalamu alaikum. May peace be upon all of you, my fellow learners, brothers, sisters, students and professionals. This video is probably going to be very helpful to you. If you are taking ACCA's Advanced Performance Management subject, as you know, I am a specialist of APM. I've been teaching APM for more than seven years now. And in this video, I hope to share some critical aspects about why students fail ACCA's APM. Something that when you look at the syllabus, right, at first glance, a paper that you find very, very easy, why do students fail? In fact, it is one of, it is the paper that has the lowest pass rate in the professional level. If you look at the aggregate for the past five years, there's a specific reason to this. And if we exactly figure out what these reasons are that I'm going to share with you, you can easily tackle this paper. The first reason is the requirement. That is both the combination of the task that you're assigned to do and the verb associated. Failure to understand the exact meaning of the requirement is one of the biggest issues students face. In fact, this is the biggest issue that the answers that you write are not relevant to the task. They don't cater to the requirement that has been given to you by the examiner. They answer something else. This is also one of the key reasons that ACCA's pass rate is very low. It usually stems from the impatience to start writing and the exam pressure you feel. So in the exam condition, right, you run on a limit. There's a three hour limit and you have a certain pressure on you that's building. So you don't really uh, think smart sometimes. Some students face this problem and you're really impatient and you're really nervous. All of that and the adrenaline kicks in. So you want to start writing something as soon as possible. This is very detrimental. Don't try to use this approach, right? Be fearless, be courageous. You have to understand the requirement first. Often students read the task and misrepresent the requirement in their mind, right? You, you misrepresent it, you misunderstand it. By projecting it to a task, they feel like what is what is asked. So you read it, and you project something in your mind into the question. You think, oh, this might be what they're asking instead of really thinking about what exactly they are asking. This must be avoided at all costs. Now, this is one reason in my training that I do for APM, I advise students and learners to not to do any mock exams in the last couple of days, right before the exam. This is because sometimes students carry the imprint of the mocks they tried especially in the last day, on the Tuesday, because APM is on Wednesday, you carry those images and you go and sometimes apply that image to the exam question. This can be very detrimental because you're ultimately not writing something relevant to what is asked from you, but writing something that you think is asked from you. By misunderstanding the requirement, students end up writing irrelevant answers and therefore lose precious time and ultimately marks. Right? So one of the biggest reasons is writing irrelevant answers. The fix is to understand the requirement. Even if you take a few minutes extra, it's perfectly all right. Make sure that you write a relevant answer. It's better to write 50% of a relevant answer than 100% of an irrelevant answer. The second reason is the syllabus content itself. I phrase it as, do you know? Now, ACCA's APM syllabus is actually not very complicated, but it's very high level. It's at very strategic level. One of ACCA's fundamental ethical principles is for the students to be professionally competent. And ACCA expects its especially professional level students because you're going to be an affiliate and member after you clear this paper most likely, is APM is almost like the final paper a lot of students do. Uh, ACCA expects you to be professionally competent. It is not really about knowledge. It is purely about you displaying your competence in a smart way because they only, they altogether, there are only about 10 tasks, right? Uh, about five in the first requirement section A, and then you have uh, two to three each in section B. So altogether, it's about 10 things that you have to do. It's very difficult to test the entire syllabus within the 10 tasks, right? But you have to be competent, you have to know about the entire syllabus because it's very 360 degree. It talks about an entire business. It is actually one reason why I have stuck with APM is, you know, as I move along, this is one of the subjects that I like teaching because it really allows us to 
apply ourselves into a practical business context. So the discussions are very high level and very relevant to today's business. Now in such a context, ACCA doesn't want to promote incompetent individuals as they are graduates because that will flood the market with mediocre competence and ultimately blow back on ACCA's reputation because if ACCA graduates are hired into a company and they perform poorly, if the reason is that they had ACCA, that they were initially recruited, it's going to leave that mark that the reason why we recruited these graduates is wrong. And so HR will build on that sentiment and overall it's going to carry a negative impression on ACCA. They don't want that. The APM paper, the P5 paper demands that you as a student must be competent in the content. So there are 14 chapters which are simple enough but very high level. So you have to give plenty of thought about all of those chapters and get that into one single view, which is what I do in general in my training sessions. And if you look at the uh, revision videos that is posted on YouTube under my channel, under the APM playlist, you will notice that I fit all the 14 chapters into one image. That is how you should remember this. When students display a lack of competence and awareness, this means that the solutions with the right evidence-based judgment is not provided. And so the answer cannot be trusted. So you have to, because when you write an answer, one of the important things is that you need to justify. You need to use evidence to justify why you are saying what you are saying. Now, part of that justification comes from your theoretical knowledge. Right? You would be saying that, no, this organizational structure does not fit the current way of operations. And I propose that they should switch to a matrix structure. Now, when you propose that, you have to justify it using, back, using your judgment, you know. So one of the aspects of justifying it is there is another aspect, but this other aspect is using your theoretical knowledge. What do you know about the matrix structure? What is it? What is good about it? What are the disadvantages of it? And those advantages, does it fit to this environment? If so, you pitch that, you fix that into that scenario and you justify your case and the examiner is happy, they give you marks. That is how you go about this. So content, right? you have to have the knowledge. It's important. And a beautiful thing about APM is I can assure you that if you learn this properly, you can carry it forward to apply it to your business. There are so many useful things that you can learn in advanced performance management that will help you in your daily life, especially in a corporate setting or even if you become an entrepreneur at some point. The third reason is the context. That is the question scenario. This is one of the most important things about APM. The idea is that to solve any problem effectively, right? Even in your daily life, if you come across a problem, if your brother comes to you with a problem, if your mother or father comes to you with a problem, what do you do? You try to listen to them because you want to understand the situation, the context. So context is critical. For ACCS APM, context is extremely important and the scenario is given in your task. It's always a practical company and within the company, they're going through a, they set the scene, right? They set the stage and then tell you, all right, this company, these, these, these things are happening. The CFO wants these, these things or the CEO wants these things. You do this. ACCA expects the student to also have a handle on general macro environmental and business acumen. So you need to have that practical insight, the ability to come up with practical solutions and a touch on good business acumen, good business common sense to apply to combine when you're writing it. Because if you write a relevant practical answer, you're good. You will pass this paper. So you need to cultivate that. This fundamentally relates to your ability to evaluate business ecosystem and environment, which is the, the most important skill in APM. As you know, I don't even need to remind you, Chapter 1, Introduction to Strategic Management Accounting. And Chapter 2, Environmental Influences. Now, this beautifully fits in with your rational planning models. Second step, analysis. What are you analyzing? Macro environment, micro environment, industry, internal company. These are the things that you analyze. Analysis is critical because after you analyze the environment only, 
you figure out what your strategic options are. Therefore, this skill is very, very important. Now, where do you apply this skill? Environment, ecosystem. You apply this skill to the given context, to the story, to the company, to the industry that is given in the question. When students fail to grasp the context well enough, the answer becomes a mundane presentation that doesn't solve the problem at hand effectively enough. This is the professional level. It's the final level and most likely the final paper. This is one of the optional papers which takes you to an advanced stage of what you've been learning, especially with respect to F2 and F5, right? So you have to use this opportunity and SBL. So P5 is layered on top of all these three papers. The things that you discuss, the examiner wants you to dig deep into your strategic capabilities. Now, in that sense, if you can't really understand a situation and respond to that situation effectively, you are at a disadvantage because your answer is not going to be written at the quality that you need to be writing it. This is one of the aspects that I do because my focus in training students is the writing aspect. And when you write, we really look at the depth of the quality of the answer, the depth of your writing. This understanding the context is critical. Remember this always. Use the scenario. Reason number four for why students fail is pre-framing answers. That is going to the exam with a closed mindset. Some students walk into the exam with various predetermined notions of the exam. How? Sometimes some students try to talk about questions, right? Like because of various time zones or because of certain advantages they have. Right? What happens is some students, now ACCA actually tackles this very smartly, and very nicely because there aren't multiple days and globally it happens in a single day. But still, sometimes this happens. And one of the issues is that ethically it is wrong but also this is very very detrimental because nobody really understands the full question ever so when you're talking to some colleague if you are which is not recommended which i'm asking you not to do this colleague might inform you about the question the way they remember it in haste because you're supposed to write very soon right this is happening on the same day now that Part of the question or that story they remember about the question might be a complete misinterpretation. What if the colleague had misunderstood the question? Walking into the exam with that image in your mind is going to put you in a very difficult position because when you are reading the question and you realize, oh, this is not what I heard. This is not what I prepared for. Now you are even more nervous. Now you are even more rattled. So trying to talk about questions with those who have sat the exam is something very detrimental. Don't do it. ACCA, for good reason, frowns upon this, both from the ethical aspect and from the practical aspect. Another example is when students try to do question spotting in various ways like mapping past papers. You know, sometimes students build tables and try to take the past 10 past papers and write the topic lists under each requirement and try to build a trend analysis. Now, analyzing to what extent the paper explores the syllabus using that tool or that method is very good. It's a very positive thing, right? But using that tool to actually build a trend and see and assume, oh, these are the tools or these are the areas, these are the syllabus topics that the examiner might test can be very, very dangerous. If you go to the exam ready with 10 chapters or eight chapters, it means you're going to the exam to face not out of 100%, but out of maybe 60% or 70%. You have to get 50 out of 60 instead of 50 out of 100. If you become ready with the entire knowledge base, and it's not even that complicated, and it's not even that vast, right? It's the depth that is serious at APM, not the volume. The volume is manageable and very easy actually. So you can have a very positive approach toward this. In fact, APM is one of the easiest papers to pass, right? Even though it doesn't happen because of these particular reasons. So 
don't do that don't try to question spot make sure that you are well covered with the entire syllabus and you've practiced on your writing that you can write in a way with good common practical sense to cater to any situation that is what we need here this kind of practice simply closes the student's mind which is quite dangerous and drastically increases the risk of failure the acca apm paper is a highly unique and a practical paper which tests the spontaneous creative problem solving capability and you are you spontaneous can you react to situations then and there and if you look at all the questions they are all an opportunity to solve a problem that is the beautiful thing about apm it's not about creating an account it's not about anal analysis alone it's not about creating an image to present creating a report creating financial statements right it's not about valuation no it's problem solving it's wonderful you get to really explore your capabilities and apply your capabilities to solve a problem when you attempt the paper with such a narrowed down mind you are unable to say, see the freedom that apm provides you to creatively solve the problem therefore end up writing answers with limited effect so avoid this avoid preframing questions avoid tunnel vision avoid ways or different things that you do that limits the scope of your work finally the fifth reason is the lack of practice or the writer's dilemma whatever you do the acca's apm paper is end of the day an exam in the written form or nowadays you type a lot right you have the computer centers the presentation of your business solutions have to be written typed the writing the solution you write has to cater to certain demands and they have basic qualities like it has to be written with a limited time frame addresses the exact requirement displays sound business acumen and sensible decision making it has to be clearly written with decent use of correct grammar and vocabulary when you haven't practiced enough even if you do everything else right you fail to ultimately present your good work to the examiner which is what gets marked ultimately and thus you can face or you end up facing failure remember presentation chapter number 6 performance reports there are four elements that you look at that defines a good report and section a your paper is a report what is the final final requirement there final uh, uh, great of a good report good presentation you have to finally present your document present your answer script in a clear simple effective way that addresses the question very relevantly this is what i do in my writing training but you have to practice you have to practice either the best way is to get the help and the support from someone who is an expert in that space who knows what they are doing but somehow either way whether you are a self study student for whom i am making this video mostly make sure that you practice please the practice shouldn't be half baked you know it shouldn't be something that is incomplete you have to at minimum minimum you have to try 3 to 5 mock exams if you are really weak i would say go with 5 if you are really good if you are really comfortable with writing three is the minimum you have to do this and getting it marked getting it reviewed will help you significantly so make sure that you don't allow the writer's dilemma to be a problem you only have to practice so in summation the five reasons why students fail p5 or apm advanced performance management number one biggest reason misunderstanding the requirement number two lack of professional competence that is knowledge not going to the exam with the entire syllabus clearly understood failure to grasp and apply the context reason number 3 where you don't use the scenario you write general answers you don't write answers that cater to that business that industry that problem 
Fourth one, preconceived notions leading to a tunnel vision approach. You're walking into the exam by undertaking certain actions that limits the scope of what you see. Your readiness is not 100%. It's not 80%. You're going ready to 40%. Fifth reason, failure to present the final written format solution at the required standard. You might do everything right. You might be a very good verbal presenter. But ultimately, it's about writing the paper. It's an essay form writing, right? That's how you write APM. So you have to practice. So all I'm saying is this. If you have failed the paper, it's okay. Look back, reflect, and figure out where you went wrong. This is very important because you shouldn't be repeating mistakes. So fix it and get it done and move forward. Don't linger on it. It's about learning from that past error or the mistake. That is all. You don't have to be discouraged. Just move forward. If you haven't failed and if this is the first time you're going to take the exam, be very thorough about these five aspects, these five reasons. Don't let any of them happen. This will allow you to approach the paper in a very positive, in a very holistic approach, 360 degree. Take into account these factors, address them while you prep for the case study and get it done and move forward. You'll probably be an ACCA member and maybe you'll write to me an email that perhaps the video helped. Now, those are the five reasons why students fail APM. You can get training with me. I undertake under ACB education. I have ACCA's APM with ACB, a special training program. There are two aspects to choose from. One is the complete option or the writer's option. The complete option gives you, as you can see, the syllabus content as well. Where you, I train you with the syllabus using video lessons and Zoom sessions. And then I train you for the writing aspect. The complete option costs $200. The investment is that. The writer's option is not related to syllabus. It's only purely focused on developing your writing. We do the journey. We do everything all out. I actually not only act as a lecturer alone, it's sort of a trainer, not coach in this case, it's sort of training that we do with respect to writing. The ACCA's APM paper is very clear about what it expects. So I do the training through mock examinations and Zoom sessions uh, on how you should write and present this paper. So if you're interested in working with me, join me and uh, we can get this paper done. It's actually a very easy paper in contrast to the pass rates that you see globally. My pass rates and my approach have been phenomenal. I thank Allah for that blessing as well. On that note, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope that the video helps you and I will probably see you again on a different day or a different video. Until then, may peace be upon all of you and your loved ones. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum.